Hello, hello, and welcome. We are so glad that you're here. This is the Courts of Heaven Tuesday Night Mentoring Group, where we step into the very realms of heaven, releasing revelation to the sons. I'm Stephanie, and we are live with Dr. Ron Horner. Today is April 2nd. We made it to April, you guys, 2024, and we are so excited you've joined us for our weekly 7 p.m. Eastern Courts of Heaven Mentoring. We meet every Tuesday night, and this is brought to you by LifeSpring International Ministries, Courts of Heaven via Zoom. For those who couldn't make it live, don't worry. You can catch us on the replay or visit our YouTube channel, Courts of Heaven Webinar, to stay up to date with all of our sessions. We encourage you to explore all that is LifeSpring International Ministries and Dr. Ron Horner by visiting our website, ronhorner.com. Everything is there, you guys. Everything. Advocacy sessions, aftercare courses and counseling classes, Heaven Down Business, Courts of Heaven membership plans, and so much more. Blogs, all the blogs, they're beautiful. Everything is right there at your fingertips. Attention Platinums, we do look forward to seeing you for our meeting starting at 12 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. And our Golds, T tomorrow is our first Wednesday of the month, Platinums and Golds. We look forward to seeing you. As Platinum members, you do receive an exclusive opportunity, allowing you to spend 30 minutes with Dr. Horner every Wednesday. You also get the first release of the PDFs of the new books, as well as one free uh, entry into a conference a year and much, much more. So if you guys are interested, go check that out on ronhorner.com. We warmly invite you to join Sand Hills Ecclesia every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Make sure that you join that Zoom link at ronhorner.com for a powerful and inspiring gathering. If you miss being live with us on Sundays, you can always go to ronhorner.com, find Sandhills Ecclesia, and scroll to the messages, and you can hear all of the messages from every week. Those interested in all things aftercare, listen up. We are having a spring open house tomorrow where you can find out all about our new classes. We have brand new facilitators, guys, brand new teachers this year. Such an exciting time for aftercare. I want to thank Jen and all her hard work. Mark and Monique, our first, our first facilitators. They have been pour, they have poured so much in. Jen has poured so much in. Faith and I just finished the Freemason class today. Eight-week course done, right? We're so excited. We bless everyone that's gone through those courses and Mark and Monique who prepared the way and really, really forged ahead for everybody. So I'm going to turn it over to Jen. Jen, welcome. Thank you, Stephanie. And yes, we are so happy that Stephanie and Faith have taken another group of people through the Freemasonry class, another group where their generations have been freed. And we bless and praise God for that. I bless and praise God for all of our teachers, all of our facilitators in this winter session, because we're we're um, we're rolling it up now. It's um, coming to an end, except for, for one class that has one more session. And um, one thing I want to remind you of, if you took a class in our winter session, would you please fill out the survey? I sent an email this morning with the survey link. Please take a moment to fill out the survey. We'd love to hear and get your feedback on that. Um, we have a class starting on Saturday. It's called Sacred Scroll. And it's, on, it's about journaling to hear the voice of God. And we have Tara Rose who will be uh, um, giving us some information about that class. But first, before she does that, I want to read some of the reviews from the last time she took the she um, taught this class. So just bear with me for a minute. I want to, from some of the reviews from the surveys, one person said it was interactive and awesome to learn that others were going through similar things and that some of us were also beginners. I have been experiencing resistance with my journaling and this class helped me to deal with that. We cleared the resistance and through the questions and time spent in heaven, it helped me with a process that I can practice to be able to journal consistently. Another person said, I love this class. I learned so much. Another said the openness and sharing of our struggles regarding consistent journaling and also identifying potential causes was a blessing. Another said, I learned what journaling is. It wasn't clear to me before. And another person says the exercises stretched us and the information on how to move forward in the course was extremely helpful. 
So those are just a few of the reviews that um, came in from the survey from the last time that Tara uh, uh, taught this class. We have, as um, Stephanie um, stated, we have our open house tomorrow and it's at 7 p.m. The link is in the chat for you to be able to register to get your Zoom link. So please do that as soon as possible. We, I thank those that have done it already. We have quite a few people that we will be attending that. And so right now I'm just gonna turn this over to Tara so that she can give you an overview of her class. Tara? Thank you, Jen. And thank you for reading those. I'm so happy to know that others have, that those that took the class, that it helped so much. And that's what I'm hoping for everyone who takes this. First, I wanna say thank you to Jen. She does so much behind the scenes to keep aftercare going. And none of us know exactly what else she does, but I do know it's a lot on her. So thank you, Jen, for everything you do. I am so excited about this extended, uh, expanded workshop. Last time it was shorter, and this time Heaven has decided it's going to be four hours long, and Heaven has added a, uh, some new stuff, and I'm quite excited to see how it's going to help change lives. We've had a lot of interest in repeating this class, and so I'm looking forward to having all of you in class. Um, you're hearing heaven tug on your heart. It's definitely for you. And well, there's we've added some additional teaching and more journaling to this workshop. The sacred scroll is based on the scripture Habakkuk 2. Uh, one through two, which says, I will stand and I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me, what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So you have multiple uh, promises here. One, God's going to talk to you. He's already promised it. So your journaling is going to happen. It says to write the vision and make it plain so that he may run who reads it. As Dr. Horner has um, taught us recently, it's not time to be walking a slow, steady walk. It's time to run. And journaling will help you with that. Um, this class will be fun and interactive. And we're going to be extremely blessed as we hear from heaven. If you've attended some of my other classes, this one isn't quite the same. Heaven's broke the mold and we're doing something a little different. Journaling with heaven is a delight and a great joy. We get to hear what heaven wants to say to us. And yes, you can hear, I promise. It's a promise from God, and he hasn't broken a promise yet. Have you tried journaling and quit or just inconsistent? Have you thought about journaling and not sure how or where to start? If you've been journaling for a really long time and looking for a new perspective for this year, would heaven actually have something to say to you? Absolutely. Are you courageous and want to open a dialogue with heaven, finding out the true heart of the father? Do you trust heaven enough to journal? Fear likes to stop anything, everything heaven wants to do, including stopping you from journaling. And this workshop will work through some courtroom work which will help clean out some of that old stuff and move it out so we can move in what heaven has. We'll share our experiences, our triumphs, our failures in journaling. Everyone will learn something new, even if you've been journaling for years. 
This workshop will help you grow and learn more about yourself and heaven. And it's uh, just one day this Saturday for four hours. I promise we will take a short break in the middle. For the workshop, you'll need something to write on, such as a journal, loose leaf paper. It doesn't matter, whatever you're most comfortable with. Most of the exercises can be done on the computer if you prefer, but not all. So please bring some type of paper and something to write with um, with you when we start the class. If you're thinking this is what you need, the Holy Spirit is speaking. Come to class and you will be blessed. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tara. And so again, we encourage you to, um, the link is in the chat to register for the open house, which will occur tomorrow. And you can, we'll hear from all of our facilitators. We have Adina Horner, who has a new class that's coming forth, Rosalind Slaughter, who will be doing a class on ministering to lingering human spirits. And we have Kay Ann Anderson. Her class is on governing your realms. And Adina's is on fear, fretting, and not fainting, okay? And so these are some great classes along with others. And David has some classes that he will be speaking about. And so please do register. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You bet, Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Appreciate all that you guys do. It's exciting. We're constantly working, building um, these are opportunities for you to build within yourself things, structures, and foundations. And I'm just really grateful to be a part of a community that's a part of this. So thank you guys. All right. So mark your calendars for July 25th through the 28th for our conference in Pinehurst, North Carolina. When you go to the site, and they're going to put it on um, in the chat for you, you are able to see where the um, hotels are. There are also a lot of Airbnbs. Um, but go ahead and get everything settled because there is a youth golf tournament that weekend. So there's some of the stuff is being snatched up pretty quickly. So go ahead. We want to see everybody there. Cannot wait. Cannot wait for July 25th through the 28th. All right. Now, if you have not already checked out che Kevin's testimony regarding Africa and it's raining in Africa, it has over 6,400 hits on it already in one week. Now, I am hitting send right now uh, in the chat so that you guys can copy and paste this for later. You are going to want to hear it. If you did not hear it already, you do need to hear what is happening in South Africa. It is busting wide open and there are miracles as Kevin is taking the people through the uh, Freemason and, and overturning those false verdicts of Freemasonry. It was steeped in Freemasonry and the men are stepping up in droves and they're repenting on behalf of themselves and them, their generation and it's beginning to rain and it's a miracle so go ahead and take a copy of that that I put in the chat for you and go listen to it later it is incredible guys once again thanks for being a part of this amazing courts of heaven mentoring group and let's dive into tonight's session and experience God's revelation together let's do our favorite thing father we thank you so much for tonight we bless everyone that is here and everyone that will be listening later we bless their spirit to know who they are and you. We bless our soul and our body. We tell it to take its seat of rest. We do indeed call our spirit forward in the name of Jesus. We ask Jesus if we can step into the realms of heaven through you. Father, we glorify you. Magnify your name. King of kings and Lord of lords. You need some help, babe? We thank you, Father. Oh. We thank you, Lord. We call our angels near to put up the shields, the veils, the curtains, the smoke screens, sight and sound barriers against every interloper, satanic agent, and evil entity in the mighty name of Jesus. Angels, thank you. Father, we thank you for our angels and what they do on our behalf. We commend them to you. We commission them to co-labor with other angels that are here tonight and those that will be hearing later. We thank you, Father. We glorify your name. 
Okay, guys, it's testimony time. Now, listen, last week, Miss Grace Coolidge was not able to share. We had so much going on. Grace, do you still want something to share, ma'am? We are so sorry. I do, I do, I do. Good. <laughs> yeah. So just uh, praise God and everything that we are doing together as a collective because we are getting lifted up together. So um, <clears throat> what happened to me is that um, things had been soaring along, wonderful abundance coming in and uh, just so many blessings. And then all of a sudden in one day, I got fired from a major job because I was talking too many religious things. And then the other one was that I was preparing for like a, a three day retreat for a family that I had been preparing for for about two weeks and that fell through. And then my car broke down and um, that was like, you know, a four figure thing coming up. But you know what? All I was doing was praising the Lord just praising the Lord, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. And somehow this is God's mathematics because I don't know how it worked. Somehow I came up with the money to get my flight for North Carolina. Somehow I came wow. up with, the, I came up with the money for the house that uh, six of us are going to rent for North Carolina what? Somehow, <laughs> yeah, somehow I came up with the money for another major bill. It's like, I can't figure out the math, but what I do know <laughs> is praising, <coughs> praising the Lord, praising the Lord. And it was just like, uh, it was like God's mathematics. So that's what I want to share. And praise and you, you all can send some bonds to me around some grounded new abundance new uh job positions that would be great too <laughs> amen yeah. i just want to thank you for reminding us that in the midst of all of these things that we do praise him and look at what comes through anyway you're like even in the midst of this yes. even in the midst of this this yes. is what's going on so yes. praise the lord grace we love you and i can't wait to see your face and hug on you all right hey anna how are you Hello, blessings, everybody. I just wanna, I just wanna, um, just impart um, what I got from, uh, from you know, Yahweh, our Father. Uh, life, you know, we're we're alive. Okay, we have Zoe. We have a life that is destroyed, and um, this. This uh, I don't want to say Easter because it's not Easter. You know, it's it came from pagan God, and um, other Christians are calling as a resurrection day. But I don't know what to call, what to call it. But you know, we're all celebrating our Savior's resurrection, and in this this weekend and week, it's just just so alive. I don't know how to describe it, but. I just feel this, you know, living life <laughs> that, that I didn't really feel. I, I'm, I guess more, I am being more uh, alive than I was before, I guess, obviously. And you guys know that I have been going through, I've been hit with the storm. And, you know, I think Father and Holy Spirit, Seven Spirit of God is just, doing a massive things inside of me. And I just want to share my liveliness, alive, uh, <laughs> Zoe life with uh, you guys. And, you know, um, want to bless you guys. And we are, we're God's life, you know, that Thank has been. You, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It is so good to see you. You always bring such joy, such life, such light. You have always been a light. We just love you and we thank you and appreciate you. And you know what? I will tell you, I know that some people we talk about Easter being a pagan holiday, but Jesus is, he defeated all of that. And you know, he does, we're celebrating him on that day. You know, we're just celebrating him. 
And so thank you, Anna. We love you. You are such a light. And I know <laughs> we love you too. <laughs> I love her so much. Okay, Leslie, you're up. Okay. Y'all know I'm a Texas girl. And I have wanted a pretty pair of cowgirl boots for a long time. And they're usually like 800 bucks. And uh, no, I'm not putting $800 on a pair of cowgirl boots. But I found these at the boot store for $80. Aren't they pretty? So I was going out in my yard and the Lord said, put on your new cowgirl boots so that you can get used to wearing them and break them in. So I've been out pruning Whenever I go outside, I have a weed fetish and a pruning fetish. So I was out there pruning and pruning and tying up bundles of branches. And I have vinca in my yard. If you don't know what vinca is, it's a traveling vine ground cover that travels and then it roots and it travels and it roots. And it makes these pretty little uh, periwinkle color five petaled blossoms. So I'm waiting in the in the periwinkle that's up to my knees and um, cutting out little saplings that are coming up that I don't want growing trees there. And so I'm pruning and pruning. And the Lord said, snake. And I said, snake. And then I'm stepping there, pruning, pruning. And I feel whap, whap, whap on my right boot. Right about here and i had been snake struck and the wisdom of the father because i listened to my daddy tell me to put your boots on girly before you go out there and wait in the high weeds they're not weeds but they're pretty anyway and uh, so just in time i got saved from the snake and so here's the thing when we listen to the father no weapon formed against us can prosper. All those who rise up against us shall fall. I will not fear what the devil may bring me because I am a child of God. And uh, got snake stuck, didn't suffer any harm. Praise the Lord. And I hope the last thing that snake saw was the heel of your boot. Anyway, so <laughs> good job listening to the Lord and having your snake bit Non hurting you boots on today, girl. Hallelujah. All right, Tara Rose, you're up. I was at a red light the other day, and normally it's a pretty quick red light. This time it was one of the longest lights I've ever sat through. And the car in front of me was a police car. And I could see the police officer, the back, you know, the back of his head and stuff. And then I thought, wait a second, he's got somebody in his car with him. And I'm sitting there looking and I'm like, that just doesn't look right because the person in the back of the car reaches up, slaps the police officer up the side of the head. Police officer shakes his head and doesn't do anything. And a few minutes later, I see him, you know, just like this against against the police officer and I'm like that's an LHS and I'm like that's why this light's so long and I'm sitting here so I send uh, my my LHS angels out to go get him and so that we can um, see that he gets sent home so my angels go and get him and bring, I see them bringing him out, and they have him in cuffs. And I'm like, okay, I don't see a demonic guard. And they're like, nope, there's no guard, but he needed the cuffs. I'm like, angels, that's your job. You decide what he needs. And so they took him to my um, hotel that I have set up so that he can be ministered to. And every Tuesday night after this, is over i send all the lhs's home that they've gathered through the week and so my angels uh, my lhs angels have a um, standing order now that if there are lhs's bothering first responders that we can send home i do know some we can't send home 
we need to stay in our lane. I get that. For them to bring um, to bring them to the hotel, and they they're being ministered to in a very special area. And so I just thought we need to be ready whenever the Lord has something for us to do. And that LHS needed to quit bothering that police officer. I'm I have no idea who he was, but I'm sure after the angels handcuffed him and took him away, that that police officer started to feel a lot better. <laughs> Thank you, Tara Rose. We know that humankind indeed is grateful for our Tara Rose that does this all the time. So for those of you that are new here, we want to welcome you, number one. Number two, anything that you've ever heard about lingering human spirits, Arthur Burke has a teaching on it, Alien Human Spirits, and Amanda Bies, uh has a teaching on it about disembodied spirits. So if you're wondering what this is about, there's lots of information out there. Richard Aird, I see you, brother. I promise I'm going to be getting back to you soon. I do. We want to thank you for coming on tonight. Um, and we want to thank all of those that are new here. We are just so appreciative that you're here and listening. Hi, Ms. Flavia. How are you doing? I'm great. Blessed. I just want to thank the Lord and thank you guys for sending all those bonds for my mom and myself. She's um, under the care of the doctor. She has to run some more tests, but she's better. And they gave her some medicine to help her sleep. So praise uh, the Lord. Getting rid of some LHSs and demon entities that do not allow the medicine to work. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, we're gl so glad that both you know, of you are doing you know. well. But thank you, guys. You bet, Flavia. We're so happy. So Flavia was on with us last Sunday, um, not Easter Sunday, but the Sunday before that, right? And when she, her mother had an emergency. And so the ecclesia stepped up right then and there and prayed for her immediately on the spot. And thank we're just so you. grateful for you guys, all of you that stand for and with one another. Thank you, Flavia. We're so glad. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Monique. How is it from down under? From down Set under. My best weather. <laughs> we finally have some sunny weather, which is great. Um, so, yeah, we've had a few challenges here. So definitely a shout out to Grace that, yeah, we just keep going and we keep pledging through. And then another thing that just kind of top it all off was dad's car was starting to act up. And I was just in tears this morning because we have an important get to today. We have to drive the car. And um, so we just started praying. We're commissioning angels. And then the angels said, well, you know, I said, what do you need? And one of them said thrusters. So I'm like, OK, thruster, you need some thrusters. I'll give you some thrusters and that sort of stuff. And eventually calmed down, had a, you know, got back to sleep again early morning and so we had already arranged to see a local mechanic just around the corner and he says well i would check the thruster there and i would check this and i check that and <laughs> look at the air filter thing wasn't even connected so it had been completely loose and we didn't even know we had checked the oil i didn't even see that so he did all of that did this met, recommended that sort of thing and shook hands i said do i owe you anything no 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 come back if you need i would recommend a tune-up because he knew i had to do this trip and i said well, we like he said, no, it's safe to go. You're good. You're not in any danger. You can drive it. It's going to be like a four hour trip today, two hours there, two hours back. And so, um, yeah, I was just like, wow. So the angels asked for thrusters. He said, yeah, look at that. We, we could check that. But um, the whole drive, like because it had been acting up, but just the mechanics around the corner and it was fine. And we went for a drive together and it was fine. So I, we just said, we just commended the angels and said, angels, thank you for fixing that car overnight. And uh, we can do this drive knowing that we're safe and peace of mind. So yeah, just continued bonds if anyone thinks of that as we're driving safely today. Um, when we were coming home late another day, we avoided a wombat, three kangaroos, a dog, and a couple rabbits. So, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to hit anything coming home tonight either. So I just... Commission those angels, and thank you so much yeah. that they're keeping us safe as we're doing our travels here. Yeah, we're, we're just learning that more often than not, the problem is not the problem. The problem is an opportunity for the Father to show up. And so uh, with all the things that we're doing, we've got a lot of movement going in, on in our life at the moment. We keep asking ourselves the question, what is the Father up to? 
because it's so easy to get distracted with someone's being nasty to us or we're feeling down or we're feeling despair or something. And it's like, again, it's that heaven perspective. God's never sitting on the throne, you know, miserable and upset and I don't want to run this universe anymore. Um, so if <coughs> he's not, why are we? And so having that perspective is really helping us. Yeah, and we keep saying um, we're choosing joy, choosing joy, choosing joy. And we went to our old church and ministry for the Easter um, celebrations and they had right in front. So they had the cross with the resurrection bouquet of flowers and somebody had done a creative tea towel that said, choose joy. <laughs> and so we're like, OK, that's another, you know, so we just keep getting these reminders that this is what we're doing and we're stepping out and um, choosing that joy. And yes, of course, we have our down days, but we also have our up days. So we just keep pressing through and shout out definitely to Stephanie and Faith for completing another Freemasonry. We just want to bless you with yep. rest and restoration and rejuvenation. Well deserved yes. for, for getting through another course. We completely understand the slog yep. that it can sometimes Ooh. be. It's... And the Lord is picking you up out of that. May he just wash you off and renew you. Thank you for, for taking the the baton or what, what do you call it when you hand over the baton. hand it over the baton that. well That's done exactly thank, thank you. you so much well done we thank keep you but we keep doing the race together it's a relay with everyone here we just we just bless everyone for covering us in prayer and supporting us in this journey down here it's we all, been a hard slog we always say that in freemasonry it's not just you you're getting set free it's your generations and people all the people that are connected to you Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we just thank you for doing that and just honor you guys for, for stepping forward and doing that while we're uh, off doing this. Amen, guys. Well, first of all, you're, you're deeply missed as being facilitators because you guys have such a beautiful flavor. And I, I've said it before, and I've heard, there's new people here tonight. They paved the way for others to be able to teach this literally line by line precept upon precept they put down on paper to allow someone to be able to pick up really quickly and teach this class. It is a, it's two huge books, two huge books that we go through in eight weeks. And it was done. Well done, guys. You forged the way and the path for many, and we just bless you too. And if you guys think about it, release bonds for them because they're making big, big decisions about which country they're going to be in and where they're going and all of the things that they're to do for the kingdom of heaven so release bonds for them as well thank, thank you guys we love you and who else on here can say i almost ran over a wombat on the way somewhere i don't know not many <laughs> praise the angel for keeping that wombat safe yeah, oh, it would have been horrible to hit him <laughs> oh yes it would have been horrible bless to you hit guys him. thank you everyone for your prayer yes. support and thank love you. we definitely feel that thanks mark and monique we bless you love you Hey, Miss Lynn, how are you doing? Well, I am blessed. Thank you. I want to first give glory to God for his beautiful timing and then um, thank Dr. Ron for your books. Um, I say beautiful timing because I have read the Bonds book. Um, and I think what I've experienced, I, I I, it didn't catch me then, but now I'm reading the um, engaging the courts of heaven. And um, just to kind of give you a little background, I have been trying to step into heaven and Tara at some point I will be taking your class um, because I would step into heaven in the morning to ask what heaven would have for me. I would get there, get into heaven and then suddenly a big plastic curtain would just slam against heaven and black out. And I couldn't figure out how to get back in at that time. It was like, it was completely sealed off for me. So going through this engaging um, the courts of heaven, um, the I realized after doing them, of course, that I had um, liens and false accusations put against me. So I did those, I, I stepped into the court, got those all released. And I can say this morning, when I tried again to go into heaven, I was in there for a very long time. 
and I was able to hear what heaven had for me. I was able to journal a little bit more. It was, it was just absolutely amazing to me because I, you know, kind of after doing this every day, every day and getting in there and then just being shut down, I'm like, okay, let's try it today. A little bit more confident that I was able to, to get in there and do it. So praise God, give him the glory for, for his timing. Because like I said, I'm sure I read it in the bonds book, but it didn't catch me at that point in time. It wasn't until now that I needed to have it. So Amen, Lynn. Well, thank we you just very stand much. With you. We just stand with you as you continue this process and, and by faith, stepping in, realizing that they're just glad you're there. Jesus is just so happy and joyous and you'll just experience so much of the love of the father as you step into the realms of heaven because guess what you are a son a positional place and you have all of the kingdom availed to you because of that so congratulations we're happy for you we we rejoice with you miss lynn so thank you for that testimony david you gotta swallow that water brother <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I just wanted to give you an update uh, regarding my son. Uh, as different ones were requesting bonds and prayers, I just want to testify how the prayer bonds really actually work. As you know, my oldest son, as you know, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, my, all of my family is there. I'm in North Carolina. But some time ago, my oldest son was rushed to the hospital non-responsive. Um, and they said he had... Uh, um, bacterial spine men meningitis. Well, he is like, totally recovered. He is walking. He is driving. He is, you know, he was an organist. Both of my sons are organists in Cincinnati. And so he's doing back, he's back in position, doing day-to-day um, -day life. And, you know, he's made a new commitment to the Lord. And I, for that, I'm grateful. I just want to encourage you all who uh, are are new on here and, and even those who are not new uh, that when we request bonds, um, they this is serious and they have they have a very serious effect. And so it is a privilege and an honor for us as sons of God to send bonds to uh, those who request it. it. As Dr. Ron always says, you know, we don't have to do the heavy work anymore. You know, God has given us resources in heaven. And that's what heaven said even on Sunday is that take advantage of the resources that heaven has made available to us. The revelations are not to be stacked up on the shelf uh, and say, how, look how many revelations I have, but they they're to be lived out in living color. And uh, I'm going to end right there, but I want to give a shout out. I saw uh, a sister on the, on the, in the Zoom tonight. Her name is uh, Rebecca Motes. And uh, her family is from Cincinnati. Her precious mother, uh, Mother Eva Motz, has gone on to be with the Lord. And her sister, Maria, I know very well. And I just wanted to welcome her. My, uh, Rebecca, welcome, my sister. And uh, and anyone else who's, this is your first time uh, on our gatherings, welcome, welcome, welcome. God has, de God has purposely directed your footsteps this way. Expect, expect, expect. Blessings. Amen. Thank you, David, for that. I'm so happy about your son. Yeah, I remember you and Ron were uh, at a conference in Texas when this happened. And David just simply took a deep breath, called his spirit forward, and stepped right into that conference in spite of the fact that he had just been told that his son was non-responsive and taken to the emergency room. And so he ministered. Um, he ministered outside of his own need. We have a friend that... Um, uh, was driving one time uh, looking for her daughter uh, who was suicidal and they she was coming up on this bridge and she her husband was driving and she looked over this bridge mourning inside of herself about what was going on with her daughter and the Lord said pray for India pray for India right now and she said why Lord and he goes because I want you to I've got your daughter but I want you to be obedient to me right now and pray for India so that's what she did. As soon as her prayer was over, got a phone call from her daughter and all was well. So you guys, just like David, when those times come and those pr pressure is there and those things are happening, pray for India. All right? 
Pray for Texas. Pray for Tennessee. Whatever. <laughs> Blessings, guys. All right, Dr. Horner, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Now, if you did, if you were with us on Sunday, you heard an excellent message from Kevin. And so look on the on the website. Look under the Sandals Ecclesia messages, and you can listen to that again because it'll be worth hearing. If you didn't hear it, you want you want to hear it for the first time. If you heard it before, you can hear it again because it was an excellent word. Uh, Kevin Kevin has a little bit of passion about what he's talking about. So, and you can see that as it comes through on that. Uh, and Kevin also is doing another seminar this weekend on Saturday. Uh, uh, some folks set it up for us. They said as of uh, this afternoon, they had room for 80 people. They had two more seats left. So uh, Kevin is a little bit busy. Uh, he got tricked in being in South Africa. And, uh, you know, one of these appointments that God didn't ask you about, he just put you there. Anybody know about those? You know, you were looking for that thing, and there you are. And so having, uh, having tricked Kevin about that, and uh, because we remember he went overseas to start the Swiss school, which he's doing. And that, they've only got two more months in their program because it's, a, it's an accelerated program. But the way the visa situation, he's only allowed to stay no more than 90 days at a, at a time. So he has to go somewhere outside of the European Union. And so he ended up in South Africa. And that's where he's been getting tricked continuously for the last few uh, few months. And uh, he's got other meetings that are coming up after this one on this weekend. So you guys pray uh, for him and Jean and for the uh, those that are helping him, Hani and Tina and uh, Marius, are also assisting him there. They're all right there in Pretoria is where the meeting will be this weekend. So uh, he'd appreciate your prayers for him and for the whole crew. And uh, they're hearing testimony after testimony. And one of the major testimonies is, if you remember in the, in the Old Testament book of Kings, uh, they believe that Baal was in charge of the weather, the Ahab and Nezbel and all that. And so it had been, they'd been in a drought. But uh, Elijah comes along to Ahab and says, it won't rain until I say so. So three years later, Elijah says so. And it rains. Well, Kevin and the folks that he was at the meeting two weeks ago, they did, they did a bunch of court work concerning the weather because the witches had basically locked it down. They want to destroy the economy uh, with the farmers in South Africa. And so they did some court work, got the, some things dealt with, and it began to rain. Some, it began to rain while they were, right after they got out of the court session, they were getting phone calls, hey, it's raining here. And in some areas, it rained for 10 hours straight. A good, nice soaking kind of rain. And the uh, weather reports, I, I went on to their weather channel uh on the online to look and see what the weather reports were. And instead of uh, dry, sunny, and drought, it was saying flooding in certain areas. What a problem when you haven't had any rain in months and months and months. And we've been in South Africa during the drought. Uh, everything looked really, really brown. We saw pictures today that were taken of one of the families where it rained so many hours. And the ground is, everything is green. The vegetation is all green now. Um, Kevin said, this thing needs to be somebody's backdrop on their on their Zoom, uh, Zoom setup. So God's up to some stuff. And one of the things that will get farmers' attention is when you haven't had rain and suddenly you start having rain, that'll get your attention. You'll appreciate that because you think about it. Your livelihood is basically dependent upon the weather. Ultimately, it's dependent upon the Father. So God's doing all kinds of things, setting him up. Uh, in order, for, they wanted him to be able to set up and have a bank account in the country. And he had to get some legal stuff taken care of. Well, they helped him get that done. So now he's got that taken care of so he can get a bank account. And they're working on getting him a house there for when he does come back and forth between Switzerland and there. So the, the favor that God's pouring out there is just fun to watch.
we appreciate all that God's doing because uh, one of the things that's in the work is uh, to start a school there uh, in South Africa. So we're making uh, plans along those lines. So as you pray for it, pray for South Africa, pray for Kevin, pray for his wife, Jean, and for the team there. Uh, the, there's an ecclesia there that they're building. Uh, and Stephanie and I stepped into heaven the other day, and we were introduced to this, the uh, men and wife that are assisting Kevin uh, in that endeavor. And so now Kevin is working with his team, uh, engaging with these men and white concerning the strategy for South Africa. So guys, just watch what God's doing. And, you know, we give him the praise for it, give him the honor for it. So uh, God's doing all kinds of things. Favor is just opening up before Kevin. And basically the word for Kevin is hang on. Because it's going to have, some things will happen so fast, you'll feel like you're just hanging on, you know, uh, just trying to keep up with things. And so uh, I remember one time we had an illustration of that. There was a fire truck headed down the, the street and the hose had come loose and was unraveling along the road. And you felt like you know, somebody needed to grab that hose and just hang on to the hose until they can get where they need to go. So that's where, where Kevin is with all the situation. So how many want to learn some more about uh, how to get some freedom in some areas of Freemasonry that you may not have known about? Now, you know, we wrote the book on Freemasonry uh, and we've been using the second edition. We're working on the third edition as we speak. And we've added a few things. We've added some more pages to it, but not just to have filler. I don't, we don't need any filler in that book. It's pretty big as it is. But you do need information that's going to help change your life, change your family's life, right? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, this is not the most comfortable uh, subject and the most fun subject to be talking about. Uh, Freemasonry stuff on the whole is not all that much fun to talk about. But we need to understand it because as Bridget Douglas found out a few weeks ago, the Lord just impressed upon her just how wicked Freemasonry is and how it just needed to be uncovered. Now, we have a promise in Scripture that says whatever is hidden will be revealed. Now, the good news is when something needs to be revealed, it can be revealed. You know, some people in their own life, they've got hidden sins. They don't want those revealed. But guess what? What is hidden will be revealed. So you can kind of bank on that. When? It's, that varies from time to time, from situation to situation. But God wants to do some things. So, but what we need to do right now is we need to call our spirit forward so that we can catch what heaven's going to, what we're going to be laying out here, okay? And what I'm going to be sharing is actually a teaching that Kevin did just a few weeks ago in the FPP class that it's relevant that we want to get taking, things taken care of. Okay, so Father, we thank you. The revelation that you, Holy Spirit, guides us into all truth. Father, we call our spirit forward. In Jesus' name, we instruct our soul. We thank you for what you do. But you can take a seat of rest for a little while. Okay? All right, we're ready? You know how we've spoken about how Freemasonry is evil in a lot of scenarios, right? I mean, if you've gone through the book, there's plenty of uh, plenty of things that go on that don't need to be going on. But and in our ministry, we've counseled a lot of people. Some, and we've heard the testimonies of, as little girls, they were taken to the basement room of their church and molested. Or things happening to the to the boys because see one of the premises of freemasonry is and they built uh, degree by degree upon this premise is one that our law is above every other law even the law of god so when you have your own system of laws you can just change the rules as you go along uh, there was a it used to be a, a calvin calvin and hobbes comic strip some of you may have seen that i enjoyed that well, Calvin had a thing called Calvin Ball, which meant he would be playing ball with his, his, Hobbs, his little tiger friend, and he would just change the rules as he went along to whatever suited him. And how many of you know people that do like that? They just change the rules when it suits them, okay? Uh, there's another word for that. It's called lawlessness, but that's a whole other thing. 
<laughs> okay. Now, <clears throat> there comes a point in Freemasonry where sodomy is very much a part of what's going on. And not just any sodomy, but particularly sodomy of young boys, prepubescent boys. There's a pro procession and a ceremony they have called the male bride, where young boys are invited and brought into the this, this ceremony. Now, these boys, they don't know what's going to happen to them. They're excited to be at the lodge and be with their fathers and uh, other men at this point in time. But often these are very high ranking members present and oftentimes members of other lodges are together for this ceremony. Now these young boys are literally dressed in a wedding veil like a bride's veil for a wedding. And they're gonna go through this process. They're being applauded and esteemed. And, but however, as a result, these boys are gonna have the shock of their life as they're gonna, going to be sodomized during these ceremonies. Now, they don't tell you about that on the, on the brochures, do they? I've seen some of their brochures. They're nice and polished. They're fancy, nice looking things, but they don't tell you everything. Matter of fact, the, in the early degrees, those above you in Freemasonry are uh, permitted to lie to you to get you to bite, to, buy, to, to take the bait or to buy into the product, so to speak. So I'll tell you whatever you need to hear to get you to, to buy into this thing. Now, <clears throat> why are we talking about this? We need to understand that this about Freemasonry. Once they get into some of these degrees, and because of ancient Egyptian sex magic, which is engaged in these degrees, this sodomy sin becomes more than just a physical thing that takes place. When you are first born, you're born with 33 vertebrae in your back. But as you grow older, your vertebrae begin to fuse together. And by the time you become an adult, you only have about 24 independent vertebrae because some of them have already fused together into one, one bone, particularly your coccyx or your tailbone. That's why they choose to do this to young boys while these boys are young and their tailbone is still a separate vertebrae. The reason for that is that while they're engaging in that act of sodomizing, they're literally pressing down on those vertebrae to put pressure on the fluid in the spinal column to shove it up into the brain, up into the brain stem, and to what they believe will impact the third eye. The purpose is to open a portal to other dimensions. Why is this an issue? Kevin said, I had several situations where people have LHSs. I can remove those LHSs today and literally dispel of them. However, the next week there's full house all over again. And this happens over and over again. And I'm asking, why does this person seem like they've got a revolving door that allows LHSs that are coming in like it's Grand Central Station? Have you ever known somebody like that? That over and over the, the, the door is wide open and they're always collecting them for some reason. He said, I'm finding out that where I've had clients that experience being sodomized repeatedly at a young age, that's exactly what's happening. This portal has been opened and LHSs are trafficking through it. They're coming and going and because their own trauma has blocked it out of their memory or they never thought of, be of being connected to something of that kind of a spiritual nature, they just thought it was a physical act. No attention is given to it. And LHSs are literally coming and going as they please. I've been in situations where I can see the spirit in the spirit that the door is propped open in their brain. And it's like there's a stick propping the door open so that any LHS can come and go, come and go, come and go. I've seen where college professors who know what they're doing by this, by entertaining this, literally prop that door open so they can come and go anytime they want. If you're somebody that con is constantly feeling that things are coming and going, coming and going, it could be somebody in your bloodline has had that portal open against their will. And if you find out in your bloodline that your mother or your father had something that almost sounds like that happened to them, what you want to do is get that portal closed and you close it through your repentance. As we're repenting, particularly for all these practices. That youngster had to comply by force. He didn't have a choice. 
but it doesn't matter. The fact is that he complied. He used his will, and it makes him an accomplice as far as the enemy is concerned. That young man traded something. We want to repent for that trade. Even the child was manipulated, and he was taken advantage of, and we want to repent for that, for his surrender, even if it was forced. Even if the child could do something we want to uh, could do something, we want to take away from the child every excuse the enemy is using. That way, the enemy has no excuses, no matter how pathetic those excuses are. We want to repent for each one so that we can take the enemy's ground away. Once we repent for these things, you can be uh, that you're made aware of. We can go in and close that portal. The same way we open the portal when we deal with LHSs. We're going to close this one in the name of Jesus. Get it collapsed, then commission this person's angels to seal off the portal and let no one unauthorized by Jesus to have entrance. Now, besides the fact that it is a the physical act of it and what they're trying to do is open that portal, there's another thing involved and it's called the Tunnel of Typhon. You know, you've heard of the word typhoon. So Typhon comes from that. Right now, he said, I just I want to share with you about the tunnel of Typhon. Typhon is a marine spirit. He's a spirit of depravity. He's an ugly serpentine, little g, God. He is violent, and he probably could be Leviathan's brother because of the chaos he brings. And that's what this sodomy is intended to do. Sodomy is more than the physical act. It is intended to bring chaos into someone's life. Now, do you know anybody who is constantly barraged by chaos? Then this is some things you can begin to pray concerning because there are some people everywhere they go and all the time there's chaos working in their realms. We may be, this may be what's attached to that. Trauma always introduces chaos, but can you add this is the depth of this particular trauma? It's worse than most, okay? <clears throat> the issue is about the trauma that's being created in that victim. As Heaven pointed out to a friend recently, trauma opens the door for chaos in a person's life, and the powers of darkness feed on that chaos. In many of these things, there are rituals of sex magic, and it just seems that the more evil it is, the better it is for them. It becomes a practice of higher level initiates in Freemasonry, that, if it, that it ends up leaving a trail of traumatized children that are extremely devastated. The act of sodomy is where the enemy is concerned is focused on all the depravity and the ravaging of a child's mind, his identity, and abandonment. They're, they're, they end up asking, where's my daddy? Why did he allow this to happen to me? And the whole thing is fixed on that spinal column and that third eye in the brain. And there's a whole lot more to it that's outside of our grid. Just to know that the tunnel of Typhon is involved and that things travel through tunnels and we want to shut those tunnels down. Now, the good news is we can get those things shut down. The night, uh, what's wonderful about the courts of heaven is that anything the enemy comes up with, heaven has a solution for. We can get things taken care of in the courts and you don't have to be some super, super spiritual guy or woman to be able to get it done. Heaven will just help you in the process of getting these things done. Now, uh, this particular engagement or teaching covers a whole lot of things that go in, tie into Mithraism and the different degrees of Mithraism because they were involved in them. They had a male bride also. Now, you think about it, having a male bride means there's a male groom. Is there a homosexual aspect to this? Absolutely. Um, so when we see it for what it is, many times, see, the narrative has been, oh, that we love each other. It doesn't matter what gender we are. No, it's not about, it's an adultery thing. Homosexuality is an adultery thing. It's not a, I love somebody thing. It's an adultery thing. And adultery is designed to destroy you. And Proverbs there are seven uh, consequences to fornication to, or to the act of adultery, where you give away your honor to another 
your years to the cruel one. You all your wages go to the to profit another, never profit you. And the final one is that uh, you're you give yourself over to wasting disease. And some people wonder why they got this thing raging in their body. Well, they got something that hasn't been taken care of. So uh, somebody take a look at the Proverbs uh, chapter, I think it's chapters five or six, I'm not sure, but put it in the chat for the folks, okay? Where they can find that. Uh, you want to look at that. It's one of those scriptures that if you you saw that before you did something, you wouldn't have done what you did. When you look at, at the uh, consequences of free, uh, fornication and adultery, because every sin has consequences. God doesn't have to judge you. Very simply, the consequences will be their own judgment. Many times people blame God for judging them over something. No, it wasn't God judging you. You just stepped across the line and you know, if you step into the traffic, you're going to get hit. And one of those things where you where you end up getting hit. Now, I don't want to continue with the, all the prayers and stuff because that is pages and pages. And you want to be able to read what you're going through. But about 830, the, uh, the blog will be posted. And you can uh, take a look, get that, print that out, and you have to begin to work through that. And you'll find that at ronhorner.com in the blog section. Okay. You'll be getting an email about it also in just a, a little bit. Okay. But what we need to understand is the enemy is trying to bring chaos into people's lives. We have never, uh, we haven't had a time where there's so much gender confusion. Well, gender confusion comes out of a, a loss of identity. Would things like this create a loss of identity? Absolutely. And so what we what we want to see is identity restored, innocence restored, and wholeness come to those who are the victims of this. And the, also wholeness to come to those who are the perpetrators. So it's a lot of forgive, bless, and release for all these people. Okay? So that we, we can walk in forgiveness toward them and see lives change. Now, uh, I, I may be talking to some people who've experienced that here that are on the Zoom with us tonight. And if that's the case, you can work through these prayers and see God to begin to bring restoration and healing and wholeness where the enemy meant to destroy you. God can fix it as if it never were. That's the wonderful thing about that. We can always have uh, an amendment in the courts called as if it never were. And that's a... That's good news to those who've been devastated by the chaos. So let me pause there and just say any questions about what we read right now. I'll have Stephanie answer them for us if she's here. <laughs> no, but I do want to say something for those that are here as you go and work through this prayer process that um, Ron and I worked on and the Lord just opened up this prayer part. If something like this, like he mentioned, has happened to you, um, or someone that you know, you know that you can invite Jesus into that moment, into that specific moment, his manifest presence to be there, and he will change everything. This is nothing to fear. This is the Lord undoing the done in generations, in our sons, in our daughters, and in our generations. That's what he is about. And so invite him in, in those moments, and he will go he goes through time and he makes it literally as if it never were and closes those doors and those portals. Amen. We've got like a seven pages of prayer stuff. So that's why we don't want to go through all that tonight. That'd take a while for you guys. And you need to be able to put your eyes on it. And as you work through these things, uh, do it for your generations. Because chances are, if it wasn't you, somebody else has gone through this. Uh, Adina and I lived in an area one time that the uh, the the fathers, uh, speaking of ministers, they felt it was their duty to break in their daughters. Now something's messed up about that, isn't it? Okay, what kind of what does that do to that daughter for for identity issues and things like that? It messes her up. 
Okay, that's the enemy about to destroy. He's all about destroying and working against your life to bring uh, bring your life to a, a miserable end. Again, the good news is God can fix that and make it as if it never were. That's the wonderful news. Any questions? Or hey Amen. I, I also want to add that as you're bringing in your generations, remember that what these deities are looking for is uh, bloodshed, innocent bloodshed. And when you take virgins and when you take little boys, there is bloodshed that is that is spilled and it is an act of innocent bloodshed that is their thirst and that is what they want and they want as much of depravity in the generation so anytime you're doing any of the court work always ask the lord if your entire generations can come in because we don't know who has done what and most of the time they didn't know what they were doing or if they did they didn't know why and so this is where you have to diligently remember it's it's not the person, it's the spirit behind the person that did these things in the generations. And we truly have to forgive them. We truly have to forgive them. Okay? You guys can do this. It's not scary. This is life-giving, beautiful thing that Jesus is doing. Redeeming the time. Redeeming what's been done. Amen. Amen. David, any thoughts on this? This is this is so needed. This is so needed, uh, Doctor Ron. I am. Um, well, it, just let me be transparent. I was one of those little boys. I was one of those little boys at the age of six, while church was going on, and um, but I thank God for deliverance. I thank God for freedom. I thank God for wholeness. And um, you said something um, that uh, that I said, and I thought growing up. And uh, some of you've heard my testimony. I think I, I shared my testimony in, in the prophetic class um, the last week. And uh, because I spent twenty three years not liking myself, we won't even talk about the love part. I hadn't gotten to that part yet. Um. And I would ask myself the question, why did my father, where is my father and why did he let this happen to me? In addition to that, uh, my mom married a minister who was very abusive physically. And if he would come into the room, I would lose control of my bodily functions because he would abuse me physically, uh, whooping me and my mom be beating her. And so, I now know the intent was to destroy uh, my purpose, to destroy, hallelujah, Jesus, to destroy my love for the Father so that I would never be whole. I would never be healed. So that this process, and, and, and you know, I praise God for this because for years I would have never shared this publicly. Never. But when I think about it, I can rem I I may have memories, but I don't have the pain. I don't have the hurt. I don't I don't have the rejection, the regret, and all those things that um, I had growing up. Uh, I didn't like myself. I thought it was ugly. I always tried to look like somebody else, be somebody else. Because and even answering the call to ministry, answering the call to the prophetic, I thought God certainly couldn't be calling me because of what my child, what I went through in my childhood. He certainly didn't want me to prophesy. He certainly didn't want David to preach. You know, he was not speaking to me. And when he was speaking to me, I thought, nah, he he couldn't be speaking to me because of my past, my reference, my childhood. But I give God praise today for what he's doing in our midst. If he did it for me, and he did do it for me, I had a wonderful marriage for 32 years. My wife, Redina, went home to be with the Lord. And I give God praise. And I, I thank God for 
uh, your obedience, Dr. Ron, Stephanie, uh, your your obedience, your submission. Uh, people look at me. They've looked at me for years, and they said, you know, they see that they see the hand of God on my life. They see the anointing, but they have no idea what I've come through. And um, you know, I went through the stages of not trying suicide, and and you know, all those things because of uh, the, the period of pain for those first twenty three years of my life. And uh, I give God praise today as I sit here, as I talk to each of you on this Zoom, that the Lord is a deliverer. He's a healer. He will heal the Thank you, Jesus. He will make you whole. Hallelujah. He will make you whole. Hear me. He will make you whole. Whom I am a witness. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just praise the Lord for this, Dr. Ron. And, you know, before you called to me, I would just, you know, it was just resonating in my spirit. Um, and as I said, there, I would have never shared this publicly, you know, because there's, there's shame to come to that. The shame with with that, um, and and all the, you know, all the <laughs> everything, everything that comes to that. Uh, I was fifty eight years old, fifty eight years old when I finally met my biological father. I was fifty eight years old. I was a senior pastor of a church in Cincinnati called Dunamis uh, All Nations Church, and they wanted to have a cookout for Father's Day. And I had shared uh, some things about my past with the congregation. And one of the sisters there uh, that was over the cookout for the men for Father's Day invited my biological father as a surprise. Uh, my son had asked me months before, Dad, um, what about the other side of our family? What about your dad? I said, well, I'm praying, David. I'm praying about that. I said, because all I want to do is love him as a son would love a father. I'm 58 years old. I don't want anything from him. I just want the experience to love him. And God gave me, when he came, uh, they said he had asked, is, is it going to be okay? Is he going to want me here? When I saw him, I just embraced him. I just hugged him. And it was as we had known each other. He had been in my life all this time. God gave me six months and eight days with him. I did not have the quantity, but I had the quality. For those six months and 18 and eight days, we talked every day. And uh, he, he, I never got a chance to spend a birthday with him. He died just before my birthday in January. I had asked the Lord, Lord, can you just please let him be here? As it were, they had the home going on my birthday <laughs> that year. But uh, I'm grateful even in that, even in that. So um, I encourage each of you, uh, if, if, if as Dr. Ron shared this, uh, and I'm looking forward to going, going through that prayer for my generations because I have a lot of grandchildren. I have family members. And like you said, I, I don't know. I don't know why it happened to me. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it happened generations before, but I do know God has called me to be the seed to bring deliverance to my family. And if I believe that each one of us that are here tonight, see, uh, excuse me for going so long, but this thing is just quickened, quickened in my spirit. He declares the end, Isaiah 46 and 10 said, he declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. You, on, you, you're here tonight because it was ordained by heaven. It's in your scroll. It's on heaven's calendar to hear this. And it may not be you, but it might be someone in your family. And take advantage of this. As, uh, as heaven said Sunday, don't let these revelations be trophies and things that we just stack up and say, look what we've learned. 
Let us walk it out. And this is one of the things I'm definitely going to walk, walk out. I encourage you to get this prayer as soon as it's up or tomorrow and just go back through it. I'm going to do that. I'm still free, but I'm going to do that because I want the Lord to do whatever he else, whatever else he needs to do. And um, if Dr. Ron, if you and Stephanie was uh, close to me, I'll give you a big hug and a kiss. <laughs> Thank you so well, much. Well, you know, your your transparency, David, has has broken the chains of shame and every bondage related to that. When you're transparent, there's not a thing that the enemy can do or say or bring up. And so as those chains are falling off of you now, you have nothing to be ashamed of your testimony is going to save people's lives the suicidal thoughts that you had before as you share your testimonies suicide is going to run away as the angels chase them away as you have said these things because people will not be suicidal because of your own testimony and the testimony of others that have gone through this and you said i don't know why this happened to me well we know that nothing that a curse cannot alight a curse without a cause cannot alight. It was in your generations, but you are the chain breaker and you've drawn a line in the sand and you're stopping it for your family. And others of you that are on here tonight, do the same. Draw a line in the sand and say, it ends with me tonight. It ends with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, David. I want to remember Jamie Buckingham. He wrote some books and pastored in Melbourne, Florida. But he wrote a book called Risky Living. And one of the quotes in that book was, true healing only comes uh, when you become transparent, even if you have to die in the process. And so one of the things about true healing is when you're, you're transparent before the Lord, you know, you, you can't fix a problem if you don't think you have a, no problem. I mean, if you think you don't have a problem, you can't fix that problem. Everybody else can see it, but you say, oh, I don't have a problem. It's hard to help you. And Jen knows that. <laughs> Sometimes we'll have clients that, oh, I'm fine. Well, when I, oh, they say I'm fine, I want to think of the Italian job's definition of fine. Freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> and that's more like the fine that some of these folks are. You know. Now, it wasn't in that particular prayer, but add to the very end of it, Ask for the amendment of as if it never were regarding you and your generations, okay? Add that to that particular prayer because uh, uh, we're with, we pulled that chapter from the book, okay? David, you got something else? You, oh, he's, about to, he's having a spell. <laughs> okay, kind of like Sandra McDonald was on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Is that right, Sandra? <laughs> okay. Uh, Anna? Anna Chung, did you have your... There you are. Yeah. Hey. Um, I just want to tell um, David, David, you are precious and you are beautiful. You are not never one second not precious and beautiful. Those people were those people that did not know. So, and I just want you to know that you're so precious and you're so, you're so beautiful, David. That's who you are. And that's who you always been. And I see you and in the spirit. And I just want to tell you that you're so beautiful and precious, David. Really beautiful. Okay. Thank, you, you, David. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Pamela? Yeah, um, thank you for being transparent, David. Um, it's in my family, too. Yeah, um, I think it touches almost all of us. But when you said something, somebody said something, and, and it just reminded me of a scripture that I've been reading. And it's in the patch. I just want to read it. Can I read it? It's <laughs> six verses. Okay, it's on it's chapter 35 minutes in the Passion Translation, and it says, Oh Lord, fight for me. Harass the hecklers, accuse my accusers, fight those who fight against me, 
Put on your armor, Lord. Take up your shield and protect me. Rise up, mighty God. Grab your weapons of war and block the way of the wicked who come to fight me. Stand for me when they stand against me. Speak over my soul. I am your strong savior. Humiliate those who seek my harm. Defeat them all. Frustrate their plans to defeat and drive them back. Disgrace them all as they have devised their plans to disgrace me. Blow them away like dust in the wind, like with the angel of almighty God driving them back. Make the road in front of them nothing but slippery, slippery darkness with the angel of the Lord behind them, chasing them away. That that just came to me when, I don't know, somebody said something, but that's the word of God. And it's like, he's got the angel of the Lord that's going to blow those entities away and protect us. Uh, what was that? It was in Psalm 35, and it's 1 through 6. It's um, in the Passion Translation. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pamela. So it was, they were asking in the chat. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, blessings to you. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, Richard, hang on. Don't go away, okay? Dr. Ron. Yes, sir. I just saw a ball of fire go backward. And the Lord said, tell the people that I'm going back in their generations and I've sent my fire to purify, to cleanse and to burn up all that that was not of me. So the Lord said, even tonight, as, as you were teaching and oh yes lord because of your obedience and stephanie god and dr ron god said you opened up a portal uh, the word of the lord always comes revelation always comes into the earth realm uh and many times it is not heard or has not been received or it's not time uh but when god brings that word in it opens up a portal so that the revelation and the flow of god can go throughout the earth and that's what has happened tonight. The fire going backward. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm burning it up like it was not there. And he said, don't you remember? Remember, 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 I am the consuming fire. And so now, open up your spirit. Open up your spirit to, to allow me to purify to allow me to annihilate. And I see the fire burn up deep and hidden roots. It's literally burning so deep that it's causing inroads backwards. These are the roads that were hitting. These were the, the these were the inroads into the generations. These were, and they're coming from all uh, uh Direction. And in fact, one one set of inroads looks like a spindle on a roof, on a wheel. Uh, all kinds of directions coming. But the Lord said, tonight, 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 I release my fire. I release my glory. I release my presence. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am a healer. And I am touched with the feeling of your infirmity. Tonight, receive a And God said, I burned away the memory of the pain in the memory. Even at the I see, I see many of you as little girls and as teenagers. Yes, Lord Jesus. He said, I'm going back to that very moment. I'm going back to that very experience. Someone was in the heat in the closet. Are you afraid to go to sleep? Because that's what it happened at night. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone, someone else is hiding under a bed. You were trying to get away. Someone, someone was trying to tell your parents, but they wouldn't hear you. They would push you away. They would push you away. But the Lord said, I heard you. I heard you. And so tonight, 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 receive your healing, receive your deliverance by the fire and the hand of God. For God said, I love you with an undying love, part of the Barshanda, and I've come to heal you. Be thou made whole tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God said, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Let me tell you this, for those who may not understand this, when you forgive them, you, you remove yourself as the judge. God is not a judge of double jeopardy. Take your hands off. And he may not do it the way you think he should do it, but just take your hands off. We forgive, bless, and release them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Dr. Ron. Give me five minutes. Okay. All right. Five you. minutes. Yeah, no problem. So, Father, we bless you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Golds and Platinums, we'll see you tomorrow morning at noon. Well, tomorrow afternoon at noon. I love you guys. Hope to see you on Sunday, if not before. Blessings, okay? And that, you'll get the email about that. But go to the ronhorner.com, look for the blogs, okay? Blessing everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Blessing. Blessing. Blessing.